Welcome back. Thanks for joining. This is the fifth video in the series, how not to lose people and even gain a few more fans during this COVID quarantine. And today might be my most favorite of all. I'm pretty excited about this one. Today's video is all about how you can gain access to a new audience. Yes, I'm not, well, I might be crazy, but I'm not crazy. You can gain access to a new audience right now. And I don't just mean any old audience. I mean a highly qualified audience. It's not going to cost a lot of marketing dollars because you probably don't have that right now. But this is going to show you some um, very practical ways to gain access to a qualified, not just any audience, but a qualified audience. So let's jump right in. So back in 2006, um, purchased a beautiful brick building, three stories, historic hotel, and with the desire to open up a boutique hotel and have an event and wedding center. And it was just gorgeous. I saw the vision for the place, the restoration that needed to happen, the, the, um, the town and the idyllic setting that it was in, and was uh, pretty much just gung-ho. I was all in. Well, when we purchased this place, it needed some cosmetic restoration. The previous owners had done a lot of structural work and had done a beautiful job. During the tenure in which they owned it, they did a lot of work and they had it open periodically now and again for events and things like that. But the fact is it hadn't been open consistently as a business since the 1940s. And this is 2006. That's a long time. <laughs> so I wasn't starting this business with an existing customer base, not at all. Um, I was starting it kind of in the hole, but jumped right in. I was excited. I saw the vision and was motivated. I wrote my business plan and I submitted it to the bank and had my numbers um, pretty good, I thought. And um, I stripped a lot of woodwork learned how to do plaster repair, learned how to repair windows, uh, lots of cool stuff. And I also had to furnish this place. There was not a lick of furniture in this 18 room brick historic building. And then had to landscape, design landscape and install um, hardscape and landscape for about an acre of grounds. So it was a bit of a costly endeavor for sure. Well, during this time, uh, my friend who's a very, very well-known and sought-after wedding planner, she approached me and she was pretty excited about the project. She was asking me all sorts of questions when we'd be ready, which <laughs> I kept moving my open date, that's for sure. She asked me about when we'd be ready, what it would look like. Um, she asked me questions about our marketing budget and then shared some marketing budgeting for the place that she was working. And I thought, oh yeah, marketing budget? My marketing budget's uh, not like that, that's for sure. I have to say, I have to, I have to admit here, my marketing budget was minuscule, right? The money that I had was being thrown into the restoration project. One of the things that we wanted to um, delve into was wedding and event space. And so I was approached by these really great salesmen for these beautiful local magazines. And um, they were expensive, those ads. But as a result, um, we had this gorgeous, glossy, beautiful advertisement in this magazine. And I think we did it a couple times. Those beautiful, expensive magazine um, ads brought me zero clients. Now, customer acquisition cost is just a part of doing business but I learned a couple important lessons here. The really important thing to know when you're spending money is the Pareto Principle, more commonly known as the 80-20 law. And what the Pareto Principle teaches is that roughly 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes. So how this translates to your business is that roughly 80% of your business comes from 20% of your customers. Now this is key, it's super important to understand. Now the first reason why this is vital information to you is that it's really important for you to know who your top 20% is. If you have 100 customers, there are 20 of them that are your fit because that's where 80% of your income comes from is that 20% of your customers. And also, it just makes financial sense to know who that top 20 is, and I'll tell you why. 
cue a slide. It costs six to seven times more money to acquire a new customer than it does to keep an existing one. That's a lot of money. It's a necessary expense, but it also really drives home the importance of making sure that those customers you do acquire fit your business well, you take care of them very well, and you know who that top 20% is. Another statistic for you, the probability of selling to a new prospect or a new customer is between five and 20%. The probability of the probability of selling to an existing customer is between 60 and 70%. Five to 20, 60 to 70. I know where I'm putting my money on those existing customers. Not only did they cost you a lot to get, but they're more likely to spend money at your place of business. This is why it's really smart marketing to make sure that you're taking care of your top 20 very, very well. Now, you take care of all of your customers well. You exceed their expectations, whether they are in your top 20 or in your bottom 10%. That's just the right thing to do. However, you do definitely take care of that top 20% a little bit extra. After all, they're giving you 80% of your income, so they deserve some extra benefits, some bonuses, and they deserve that you know them really well. So let me give you an example in your own life. You have lots of friends and acquaintances, right? So here there are your acquaintances, and then they're your friends, and then maybe family, and then maybe your good friends. So out of this realm of people that you know, these people over here are the ones that you do book club with, or you go camping with, or you go out to dinner with. These people are your top 20%. So just like in your own personal relationships, that top 20% gets some extra attention from you, your business is the same. The top 20% gets extra attention and they get some special access or whatever that looks like for your business. So while all of this is interesting, how, Samantha, does it relate to how can I gain access to a new audience right now? Well. Let's pretend like I am your top 20%. I fit you really, really well. I fit your business really, really well, right? So I am associated with, and I hang out with, and I'm friends with people who are much the same as myself. They have similar interests, they have similar economic backgrounds, all of those things that come up with your quote customer avatar, which is for another lesson. But just like your book club or your mountain bike club, these people, they have the similar interests. So if I am your top 20% customer, remember, I hang out with and I know people and I'm associated with people a lot like myself. They're right back here, right? Here's one, here's one, here's one. And then you have access to me. So we could do a couple of things here. You could either ask me for access to all of those people that I know, which if you're serving me well, I'm gonna be happy to do, or I could get out of the way and you could just try to get them on your own. You could spend that six to seven times more money acquiring those customers, or you could just try to go through me. This is why I'm so excited right now about customer acquisition and gaining access to a new audience not any new audience, but an audience that's highly qualified and really, really resonates with your target customer. Because where am I right now? I'm all over social media. I'm stuck at home. And you have me almost as a captive audience right now. So by all means, you definitely want to be engaging with me, asking for my referrals, and really making me happy right now. So this illustration gives you a really good example of the relationship between your customers and acquisition of a quality target market new customer. You can see that it goes from referrals, which if you've served me super well, I'm happy to give, and that creates a viral loop for you to acquire some new customers. So I am so excited right now, particularly right now, but actually this applies to any time during your business. Knowing that 80-20 rule and applying it and then serving customers really well are how we smartly grew our business with little marketing budget, especially after my bloops in the beginning. And we grew our business to be very successful. We put it on the map, so to speak. 
I hope that this helps you and excites you and motivates you to really dig into finding out who your top 20% is, serving them well, and using them as an in to gain access to all those people that they know. Have a terrific day. Thank you so much for watching. Someone's mowing their lawn. Oh, good timing. Now he's using a weed eater. Oh, stupid leaf blower, come on. Hopefully you can't hear it. <laughs>